Good morning. Welcome to First Local Morning on Tuesday, October the 13th. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm Chris Oldcorn and I am here with Daniel Pratt. Good morning, everybody. Oh, quite yeah. the Thanksgiving weekend. Yes, I uh, had a nice uh, Thanksgiving weekend with mm -hmm. my parents, so that was nice. I'm really glad I was traveling in the direction I was, though, on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> the, going down, there's like almost nothing. Yeah. Uh, coming back, there's almost nothing. But the other direction, wow. Like yesterday really? when I was coming back, completely stopped. Like really? Oh yeah, and I'm talking stopped like wow, like way way like my parents are in Wasaga. Yeah. Uh, so I come up to 69 yep. 400, right? It was stopped like just coming out of Sudbury, all the way down to where I got onto the highway uh, further yeah. down uh, in the Coldwater area. So I noticed even just locally around here on the highways locally, like it was booming all weekend. Like it was hopping. Yep. Uh, people were out moving around like crazy, so yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, we uh, we had a good Thanksgiving. It was fun. Uh, That's good. Just my parents, my girlfriend, and I, and the dog. So well, the weather yeah. was uh, quite interesting. All over the place. Over the, all over the place. Yeah. We didn't get too bad of weather. Um, you know, the temp temperature wise, anyway. Yeah. And a couple of the days were good, and the forecast held true for Monday. Although we did see the bulk of our rain last night. I don't know if you if you were here at that time. Yes, at eight. I was driving and it cleaned my car. So it uh, it just downpoured there for a good hour, and then it just moved through, and now it was clear overnight. So. Yeah, and uh, like Saturday when I woke up, it, it was 22 degrees. Oh, yeah. you guys got good. Yeah, good but by one o'clock it was down to like eight or something. It was, yeah, it it, it, co it cooled down very very quickly. Yeah. But it was nice to have like a little bit of the heat there for uh, enjoy it a little bit. A little get the bit. shorts on. Yeah, well I didn't get to the shorts, but ah. it was nice to have a little bit of warmth for a little bit of the morning. Anyway, still yeah. a cold again. Uh, okay, uh, we got a bunch of stuff on today. Yeah, um, at 9 a.m. we have Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, she's the Supreme Court Justice nominee uh, for the U.S. Supreme Court. We'll be carrying her uh, proceedings today from the Senate. We'll also have uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, his press conference at 11.30 a.m. this morning, so make sure you come back for that. And as usual, Doug Ford will be on at 1 p.m. today. He's in Toronto somewhere, and he's with Rod Phillips, who's the Minister of Finance, and Pragmeet Sakaria, who's the Minister of Small Business and Red Tape. Red tape reduction, yeah, which is a new titles. position. Um, yeah, yeah. Red tape reduction. Uh, apparently, he doesn't like red tape. Uh, other tape colors. Who knows? Uh, okay, moving along. Speaking of reds, mm -hmm. what's what's red and what's at many intersections, especially good <laughs> near schools? Yes. Stop signs. So, Mayor Provenzano voted against a stop sign near a school. Yes, you heard that correctly. Mayor Provenzano voted against a stop sign near a school. There's a yield sign there right now. This is at the corner of, sorry, excuse me, uh, at, uh, it's on Illinois Avenue where it hits Texas, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a yield sign. They were debating on whether or not to move the yield sign back a bit right. uh, by about five feet so it's easier to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they voted to remove the yield sign and then they decided to vote uh, on putting a stop sign in to replace the yield sign. Now the mayor voted against the stop sign. This is right up the street from a school. Mm -hmm. They're presently doing a study on this area. And guess why they're doing a study on this area? Because it's considered well, a school zone. Yeah. And the, they're going to have the study back by the end of quarter four. However, um, for the time being, they have voted to put the stop sign in. Mm -hmm. uh, the bulk of councillors chose the wise decision to put in a stop sign uh, and remove the yield sign. So it will be turning into a stop it, sign. It is in there, actually, by the way. Yes, it is now, it. yes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. when that I happens, drive through there much. when I go to that school to patrol it. Yep. And yeah, yeah. it is in already. So Yeah, yeah. so it's quick. Uh, but yeah, so the mayor voted against that stop sign. Uh, great job. I mean, I know because I found out the hard way when I almost went through it. Like, <sighs> to the yield sign. Yeah, yeah, and the yield sign was hard to see because there was like it, it was, yeah. it, it, and yeah. I get where the backing the five feet, mm -hmm. but you know what? If you can just replace a sign, a stop sign, I don't understand the. I don't get thing. the logic there. But we'll uh, continue on. City yes. Council will be meeting tonight at four thirty, and they're going back to virtual mm -hmm. meetings. In case you're wondering, yeah, they uh, did two or sorry, one in person meeting, and now they're back to virtual. right. So uh, due to the holiday, obviously they're doing it tonight instead of on Monday. The agenda doesn't appear to have a lot on it, but of nope. course our Dan Gray uh, has went through the agenda and has checked the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of the things on there is an update on the Best for Kids Transit Pilot and improving an application for New Horizons Seniors Program. Mm -hmm. But if you read a little further in the agenda, 
A $111,816.13 repair bill is set to be passed without much discussion. So, this is the attached report explains it is a sole source contract with Tormont Cat to repair a grader damaged as a result of winter maintenance activities. The repairs are going to have to come out of the 2020 winter maintenance budget under Public Works Winter Control already. And an upgrade to Blake Avenue is also on the agenda, by the way. Okay, just a quick note about the graders. And I did send this to our group last night. I had a conversation with Matthew Shoemaker, Councillor mm -hmm. Shoemaker, in yep. February of 2018. How I would all constantly see these graders going out, scraping bare roads, and they're constantly being used for plowing work, right? Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be used for that. They have dump trucks yep. with plows for that reason. And they're just, just destroying them. And here you go. Here's a good example. Yep. And, and the answer that Shoemaker got from staff was, well, if a piece of equipment was out, it was out for a reason. <laughs> so obviously, there's a conversation, like Dan says, it doesn't age well. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is um, that's a lot of damage, considering the actual yeah. costs of those graders in the first place. Yeah. And they say they're going to prove it like yeah. it's no big deal. Yeah. It's in the consent agenda. It's in stuff. consent. And, yeah. I, and actually, they've already done the repairs which is weird because they needed to get consent to be able to spend that much money to repair something. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the Civic Plaza where they have public <laughs> consultations after they pass the Civic uh, Plaza. It, yeah, and yeah. we all do things backwards yeah. here in Sioux yeah. Marie. Apparently everything is like up is down and down is up in this town. Okay, uh, NerdCon organizer uh, is a little cheesed off of the Gum of Public Health. Mm -hmm. uh, primary reason would be that their event was canceled while a gathering of 270 people this past weekend at mm -hmm. Conference Center here in town proceeded with two, with the 270 people coming from across Canada. NerdCon happens every year. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the, the lady who runs it is Beth Davidson. She's from uh, Vintage Games and Junk. Mm -hmm. uh, she scaled back the event. She put in the required precautions, you know, the, the distancing, mm -hmm. wearing face masks, all that stuff. Then APH found out that they were still having their event, and this is what she said. APH called us when they got wind of the fact that we are holding an event and didn't even ask us about what safety measures we had in place they simply said we cannot allow this event to happen so mm. apparently APH likes to play favorites and uh, so Why no NerdCon but you can have religious uh, events okay uh, mm. Quattro which is where the place where, sorry where the place where the uh, religious convention took place uh, issued a statement uh, they said we because there was obviously a lot of backlash online, mm -hmm. there's tons of comments, you can see it on our Facebook page. You know, that story had tens of thousands of reads. Uh, this is their response. We hear you and we apologize. Your concerns are valid. In fact, we echo much of your sentiments. Our decision to host a recent event resulted in dis dissatisfaction from our community. We're doing our best to navigate these unusual times. While the event organizers and Quattro worked in tandem with Algoma Public Health every step of the way, Following your guidance and adhering to stringent public health protocols, we regret, regret the alarm it raised. Again, let's say we're sorry. Okay, so um, Algoma Public Health worked with Katra to allow that event to happen. Mm -hmm. However, uh, with NerdCon, they just said you can't have the event. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on before I have a heart attack. I know. It's always about APH and the mayor. It, it's always frustrating when we have to start off the week with those two wonderful yeah. organizations. The, 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 yes. Uh, okay. Talk about this function. Yeah, exactly. So over the weekend, there was a lot of action as well. Dan Gray, our reporter, was on the move. And we have an update for the barricaded person story, which is up on SueOnline.com, which you can find there if you want to read all through all these, the original releases. However, there was a peaceful resolution at October, on October 11th, 2020, around 4.30, 4.30 p.m., officers responded to a call of a barricaded person in a residence in the area of Second Line West and Farewell Terrace. Upon arrival, officers observed the residence had been damaged. The ESU was called into the scene and secured the scene along with patrol officers. Uh, at 12.30 a.m., so eight and a half hours later, officers are ent entered the residence and safely took the person into custody. So a good result on that. And yeah. also, last night, two were sent to hospital after a collision that occurred on the corner of Bruce Street and Wellington Street East around 6.30 p.m. According to witnesses on the scene, a westbound vehicle collided with a northbound vehicle at the intersection. At least two people had been sent to the hospital. A local resident said it was bound to happen due to the speeds people travel on this section of road where it occurred. And yes, it's a racetrack there sometimes. Yeah, 
Uh, it, it, Maybe if the police aren't busy pulling over KC security, they can do some police <laughs> enforcement or speed enforcement. There was a lot of police at that at that where the bear. Oh, was. that yeah, yeah, that's a very that, important. There was uh, yeah. Dan uh, News Dan, uh, not Weather Dan. We have two Dan. We have two Dan. This is Weather Dan. We also have News Dan. News Dan uh, was there. Uh, he, he went there when it first happened. Mm -hmm. Went home, had Thanksgiving dinner. Came back because he lives right up the road from there. Came back later on. Was there for another couple hours. Right. Uh, but it wasn't even resolved until about 12.30 in the morning. He ended up leaving around, I think, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, but uh, you can see from the video there that there's a big hole in the in the window. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that something big obviously was chucked through, which is probably what alerted people that something was going on. There. And you so, know what? And that's and, and those officers that are trained for that. And when yeah, the crisis unit. You know, we had a thing on the crisis yeah. unit a while ago with a, where they take a mental health worker and yeah. then they put up with a police Absolutely. officer trained in that. So, so good, good work yeah. on that uh, to the Sioux police there. So over the weekend, like I mentioned, it has been, I don't know, it was a mixed bag, but we did have some nice days. Before we look at our camera, you're not going to see this, but several folks in BC and Alberta are giving thanks for the winter wonderland that they had over the weekend. Calgary and other parts of southern Alberta saw snow on Monday due to cold Arctic air flowing into the region. Of course, this isn't not, uh, you know, a weird thing. It normally does snow. My sister lives in Calgary. Yeah, it normally yeah. does snow in Alberta and in the mountains starts around this time of year in BC in the Coquihalla region there in the Rockies. So, yeah, the snow has hit, but we're going to look at our camera now, which is brought to you by wirelesscom.ca. Oh, that's a beautiful shot this morning. The skies are clear. Look, the sun just happens to be shining over that lovely city hall right now and a little bit over the pavilion. I'll have your weather details, three-day forecast, regional temperatures all coming up after the break. And we want to thank uh, Northern Lights Detailing as well for sponsoring our weather. Chris and I will be right back. We'll talk to you shortly after this break. Stay tuned. we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health support more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know. Asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help. Good morning. Welcome back to First Local on your Tuesday, October the 13th. And wow, we've got lots of viewers on Facebook and lots of shares as always. Thank you very much. And want to remind everybody that you can watch us live on Facebook as well as on many platforms. You can also watch us on sueonline.com or on tv.ca, on your Amazon Fire, Roku TV, whatever you might have there. And just want to say a quick good morning to the ones I did see, Winona, Carolyn, which is my mom. Good morning, mom. And Ineki, as well as Cindy. So we'll get to more Facebook shout outs shortly after as well. Just make sure my sheet is ready. Okay, so let's look at our radar here. 
that system that we had last night that just dumped some rain on us it is gone we have clear skies now cleared up about midnight and it stayed clear for pretty much the whole night and it's nice morning out there as you can see this is all moving now towards it's over ottawa so we don't have to worry about anything at this point and then while well, we're going to go into our expected highs now for today so that is 11 in thunder bay 13 in wawa and timmins 16 here in Sault Ste. Marie, we're the warm spot once again. 13 in Elliott Lake and 14 in Sudbury. Getting into the overnight lows, a little bit chilly, we're in single digits. Fours in Thunder Bay, Wawa, Timmins and Sudbury. And then the seven here in Sault Ste. Marie, five in Elliott Lake. So we are getting to those cold nights once again. So currently we're sitting at six outside mix of sun and cloud you saw on our wireless.com or wirelesscom.ca rather camera that it is a nice sunny morning out there it is crisp we are going to see a high of 16 as mentioned and a low of 7 overnight there will be winds once again becoming southwest 30 kilometers gusting to 50 in the afternoon so this has been a trend all weekend too once again it's been windy a few showers overnight ending this evening then cloudy with a 30 percent chance of a passing shower overnight and then winds will be northwest 30 kilometers gusting to 50 and they will become light after midnight so die down just a little bit then they'll pick back up and it's going to feel like 13 today with the winds but 16 degrees you'll probably get away with a t-shirt might not need a sweater or a jacket today but do have your umbrella just in case we get a shower but looking at wednesday and thursday is not looking too good there we are going to see on wednesday for the morning we're going to start with mainly sunny and then it will become increasing cloudy in the afternoon and then we'll start to see the rain move in winds again will be southeast 20 kilometers late in the afternoon and we will see overnight a low of eight and periods of rain throughout the night as well that's going to move in and continue for thursday you're going to see periods of rain on thursday as well nine degrees and you're going to get to a low of one on thursday night so here we go on thursday night we have 40 percent chance of rain showers or wet flurries yes that's right we are at that time of year where you might want to make sure you get your winter tires on soon because we're going to start getting into those nights where we might see some wet snow and depends it could stick at some point as well maybe not too long in the day because we are still getting up into the warm temperatures but friday we're going to see a mix of sun and cloud 40 percent chance of rain showers or flurries in the morning and then overnight on friday you're going to see a low of two cloudy with rain showers and flurries potential as well on friday night that of course can change by then but we will keep monitoring that for you coming up in the seven day well, there's a little bit more wet weather as well and i have a weather watcher photo for you coming up later on in the show make sure you do go to facebook we will be doing facebook shout outs once again shortly want to thank northern lights detailing for sponsoring our weather as always they're at 632 great northern road and wirelesscom.ca for sponsoring our camera chris and i will be back right after this break with more weather stay tuned more news Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. What's life without making a few mistakes down the road? A few sharp turns and doing things for what we adore but might regret later. 
A trip to Chuck's Roadhouse isn't one of them. With melt-in-your-mouth AAA steaks, buttery lobster tail, half-priced apps after 9 p.m., an ice-cold draft with all your Roadhouse favorites. Chuck's Roadhouse. Food the way it ought to be. Priced the way it used to be. For all those times... Every three seconds, someone will develop Alzheimer's. A fatal disease that steals your memories and makes you forget the people you love most. Fortunately, there is hope. Today, researchers believe a cure is just a few years away. It's okay, Daddy. You can go. Just go. For just $9 a month, you can fund research for a cure and make history by ending this disease. Welcome back to First Local for Tuesday, October the 13th. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. I'd like to thank KC Securities for your sponsorship. Thank you to Northern Lights Detailing for sponsoring the weather. And thank you to Wireless Call for showing us the beautiful pictures of downtown that we see each morning as well. So thank you to all our yes. sponsors for that. Okay, make sure you go to Sue Online for all your Sue sports. But right off the top, we got some news about Steel City Slam. Uh, we did in one of our reporters, Mike, did an interview with uh, mm -hmm. Steel City Slam the other day because their fall programs are now underway. Right. Uh, and talked with uh, Jeff Giovannotti, who is the uh, board member for uh, the Steel City Sports. He's also uh, the coach with the SLAM program. Right. Uh, he was talking about how you know the, they're able to build leadership skills and teach people how to deal with conflict and work in teams and so on. And basically, you know, sports does that because you have to work together yes. as a team. It's, it's great basketball's for that. not a one-person sport. Hmm. You might have a Michael Jordan, but if you don't have a Scottie <laughs> Pippen next to you, you're in trouble. That's right. So uh, I was talking a lot about that. In the interview, so you can go check that out on our website at suonline.com. Uh, like I mentioned, their fall program's underway, but you can also sign up for the winter winter program, which will start in January. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can go to steelcityslam.ca for more info. So steelcityslam.ca for more info if you want to put your kids into some sports because some stuff is happening. Actually, Colette, who's uh, mm -hmm. one of the morning show hosts here, um, she was texting uh, me on Saturday, and her she was at her the son, son's lacrosse. Oh, so okay. lacrosse is going on as well. So. Oh, that's good news yeah. too. Yeah. It's nice to see some kids going out and playing some sports. Again. Yes, that's very important for them. Um, so NFL. Yes. Saints 30 over the LA Chargers 27. Uh, so the Saints are 3-2 and two now and the Chargers are 1-4. and four. And I noticed with the NFL actually, there's been a lot of games being postponed. They're having yes. a lot of issues compared. I have to say, yep. the NHL seemed to do a lot, very well yes. with uh, with their COVID protocols mm -hmm. and everything. The NFL struggling. Yeah, but hopefully well, tonight is a makeup game too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like tonight, it's, uh, the Bills are yeah. playing the Titans, Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. Titans did have an outbreak of COVID nineteen. They were the first NFL team to actually have an outbreak of COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. So they've actually only played three games, whereas uh, most teams have played four at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, however, somebody's going to have a loss on their record tonight because the yeah. Bills are four zero. The Titans. Titans are three and zero, so someone's gonna, someone is either gonna be five and zero or four and zero uh, tonight after they play their game. Assuming it goes ahead, right now mm -hmm. there's, uh, they say that it is going to go ahead. Yes. So uh, this is the Titans' first game since they had that COVID outbreak. So I noticed that we don't have the um, NBA in here because it's done. Yes. Did we mention that? that yeah, the, the Lakers won. They won. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, they it was over the, won over the weekend. Yes. So just so quick. Yeah, it's a good point. Lakers are the know. NBA champions. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays, 4-2 over the Houston yes. Astros. They're leading that series 2-0. So the MLB is pushing along as well, getting close to those finals very yep. soon. Yep. So now yep. that the NBA and NHL are done. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's the American League Championship Series. And then in the National League Championship Series, it's the Braves versus the Dodgers. Uh, they played their first game last night, and the Braves beat the Dodgers 5-1. So Atlanta's one up uh, on that series. Mm -hmm. uh, both teams will be playing again tomorrow. So uh, the, the playoffs for Major League Baseball, we're getting close there to the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, you know, it's uh, usually the, the World Series is in October. It'd be interesting to see if the World Series is finished in October this year. Yeah. Uh, but it might be, but uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, but we'll be back with seven day forecast right after this. that one in three people are affected by fire in their lifetime? Or that one in three fire deaths happen in homes with no working smoke alarms? 
you may have just seconds to safely escape a fire in your home. That's why early detection of fire is absolutely vital. Only working smoke alarms provide those precious seconds you and your family need to safely escape. Install smoke alarms on every story and outside all sleeping areas of your home. For added protection, install a smoke alarm in every bedroom. Test smoke alarms monthly by pressing the test button. If the alarm doesn't sound, install a new battery. Replace alarm batteries at least once a year and whenever the low battery warning chirps. And if the alarm still doesn't sound, replace the alarm with a new one. Smoke alarms have an expiry date. Remember to check the back of the smoke alarm for dates of manufacture. Replacement is within the time frame on the manufacturer's instructions. In most cases, seven to 10 years. Always replace expired alarms. Remember, it's the law in Ontario to have working smoke alarms on every story of your home and outside all sleeping areas. Failure to comply with the Ontario Fire Code requirements could result in a fine or even jail time. So protect yourself and your loved ones by ensuring that all your smoke alarms are functional and up to code. For more fire safety information, please visit www.sustmarie.ca forward slash firesafe. A message from the Government of Canada. And good morning and welcome back on your Tuesday morning just after 8.27. And good morning to Colette just popped in, mm -hmm. our other co-host. And I missed Giselle earlier. So good morning, Giselle. I don't want to get in trouble from producer Mike's yeah. wife. So. Yeah, because he's the one that makes us look good. Exactly. Yeah. He's the one that makes us look good and he can shut us off. Yeah, so. he can also turn us into Smurfs or something <laughs> with the appropriate filters. That's right. Um, all right, let's get into the seven day here. Wednesday, Thursday are going to be wet for you. And then we will get a bit of a break on the weekend. Temperatures are going to be hovering between 8 degrees and 9 degrees for the majority of the week. We're going to see a little bit of a, a shower on Sunday and back to overcast on Monday and then back to showers again. Overnight lows are going to dip from 8 down to 1 on Thursday night where we may see some snow flurries over those few nights. And then they're going to kind of fluctuate between 5 and five rather and 3 degrees. Thank you to Northern Lights Detailing for sponsoring our weather. If you go there this month, you can get $15 off a crown rust proofing if you get a detailing service there. So make sure you do that. And let's look at our Weather Watcher photo now. And uh, it's coming up in a second. All right, there we go. And this is sent in from, this is actually from the Hamilton region. Hmm. Pine Valley Campground. So thank you very much for sending that in. We're getting some photos we had one yesterday. It wasn't on the show, obviously, because it was a holiday, but I featured it on the website, mm -hmm. and it was from uh, New Brunswick. Huh. So we're at Sackville, New Brunswick. So we're getting viewers all over the place sending them in. Please send them to ontvweather at gmail.com and include your name and location, and they go up on the show and on sueonline.com. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. But we're actually getting a bunch of these Weather Watchers photos being oh. sent in. Oh, it's, I yeah. got three or four more over the weekend I got yeah. set up now, so... Yep. Yeah, thank you very much everybody sending those in. And thank it. you to everybody who shares our stuff on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. We yep. very much appreciate it. Um, it's fantastic yes. uh, that you're out there helping us uh, get the show out there and uh, also the stories from SueOnline.com and so on as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, just quickly, uh, the Ontario numbers, the last numbers we had were actually on Sunday. They didn't release them yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 649 new cases, by the way, that's down from 939 on Friday. Mm -hmm. Uh, so 649 does sound high, but it is down like 300, almost 300 from Friday. Right. Uh, 140 of those cases were in Toronto. Uh, Ottawa is continuing to see a lot of cases with 54. Uh, one uh, death related to COVID-19. Uh, they did conduct 44,138 tests, uh, but they do have a backlog of just oh, almost 46,000 tests right now. The backlog mm -hmm. uh, from the hospitals that reported, because not all hospitals report on the weekend, uh, so there's at least 217 people in the hospital, 51 in the ICU, and 32 on ventilators. 
Okay, so today's schedule, 9 a.m., we will have Amy Coney Barrett's Supreme mm -hmm. Court nomination hearing for you here at 9 a.m. We will have Justin Trudeau's press conference at 11.30 a.m. this morning, and we'll be back with Doug Ford at 1 p.m. Uh, he has a press conference today with uh, Rod Phillips and Pragmeet Sakaria, and I will see you back here at 1 o'clock with Dan. Have a fantastic morning. Take care, everyone.